Hey everybody, happy Friday, happy 1st of June. Uh, a number of people commented on my video Tuesday that they liked me walking and talking. I think it's just a, a common plot to get me to get more exercise, and that's probably true. But one of the problems I had with that video is that, <coughs> excuse me, that the microphone on my camera picks up every little bit of wind noise pretty severely. So I'm going to try to circumvent that today by using my lapel mic. But I haven't had great results with the lapel mic in the past when I have moved. It seems to rub against the cloth of my shirt or whatever, and that's almost as much of a distraction. So this might be a total bust, but it's worth a try. I'm going to walk today along the river um, towards the Broward County Performing Arts Center and do my Friday Reads talk, which is going to be pretty brief this week anyway, at the same time. So I'm going to take you along with me. Okay, I just went under the Andrews Drive Road Street, I don't know what it's called, the uh, drawbridge that I crossed over in Tuesday's video. I'm just going to stay on this side of the river and see if it actually continues all the way down to the Performing Arts Center. I think it does, um, but a lot of the traffic noise will start to disappear as I get down to this part. There's a lot of construction going on downtown, as always. Uh, here comes the boat they're going to have to raise the bridge for. Oh, doesn't look like I can get there from here. I might have to go back and cross the river myself. Foiled. Okay, this is the view of the New River from the Andrews Avenue drawbridge, looking back towards my apartment complex. If you see the building straight ahead of me, it's kind of white and gray with big palm tree on the roof. That's where I live. And this is the direction headed back towards the ocean. We're about two miles away from the ocean here. Okay, we'll try this venture again on the other side of the river. The riverfront area down here is a, an enormous complex, but unfortunately, long before I moved in, it's all but abandoned. There's a movie theater in there that's closed, tons of shops. This is one of the few restaurants that's actually still in business, and they seem to do a pretty good business. But it's really disappointing because this area could be so vibrant but at night, it just disappears. I have no idea what's being built here, but there's just tons of construction going on downtown, which is good as long as it gets occupied. I keep picturing in my head when I lived in Texas and the oil boom stopped and there were multi-million dollar buildings in downtown Houston that sat completely empty, had never been occupied. And I would hate to see Fort Lauderdale go through that, but they certainly are building quite a bit. Okay, I'm out of the construction zone and I'm back along the river walk. And it looks much more peaceful here. This is technically old Fort Lauderdale Village. Um, coming back. There's a history center 
History Fort Lauderdale Museum of History. Never been in it. Across the river you can see one of the big yellow water taxis. That's the, the not the free ride, but the one that goes much further along the river. I think I'll stop in here and do the first part of my Friday reads. See our little lizard friends? They are literally everywhere in Fort Lauderdale. Some of them can be pretty large. Okay, so this week for me, um, on the read-alongs, a little update on the read-alongs, we were reading our first non-fiction choice, which was Matthew Desmond's Evicted. And I'm almost finished with it. I have 70 pages left that I'll read tonight or tomorrow morning. <clears throat> but it's, um, it's been really fascinating. I mean, we all understand that inner cities around America have poverty issues. This book is set in Milwaukee and the author chose Milwaukee not because it's unusual but because he knew it very well and he gave some statistics in the beginning of the book showing how it's not unusual at all. It just is representative of the problems that the poor have in big cities, especially with housing. If you're poor, if you're living on welfare or some kind of assistance, housing easily eats up 75 or 80% of your monthly budget. And that doesn't leave enough money to live on. And so these, these people are caught in a vicious cycle where they find a new place to live until something happens and they get behind in their payments, then they get evicted again, and then they have to find another place to live. But each time you get evicted, it goes on your record and it's harder and harder to find a place to live. So I don't want to say too much about Evicted right now because it's, I'll talk about it on Sunday in my read-along video, um, but it's just a devastating read about the cycle of poverty. And granted, some of the bad decisions that people caught in that cycle make that make it even worse for them. But even if you make all the right decisions, if you're in that situation, there's no guarantee you're gonna come out of it well. So that's for this week. Next week we start the second cycle of read-alongs and we'll go back to the 100 essential novels list and we'll be reading the first volume of the 12 volume series in Anthony Powell's uh, A Dance to the Time, of, A Dance to the Music of Time series. And the first one is called, and uh, this, this title, the book better be better than the title because I've forgotten the title of this book at least a dozen times. Um, a Question of Happiness, I think, is the title of the first one. I'll, I'll put the title, or I'll put the cover up so you can see if I got it wrong. So that's next week, and I'm only committing to the first of those 12 novels. I'm not going to read all 12 unless I love them. And then the week after that is our next classics um, read, and we're doing Henry David Thoreau's classic, Walden. So a non-fiction read on the classics list. So that takes us through the next couple of weeks, almost to the end of June. Um, and it's going well. Uh, we have, I don't know, 20-something people have joined the Goodreads group, even though the Goodreads group is kind of a secondary site compared to the comments here on YouTube. But I'm happy to see people are starting to pick up some of the books that interest them and are adding to the comments. So please join in if you've read these or want to read these, join along. I'll link the website that has the calendar and the book selections and the whole lists. Um, I'll link that in the description box. So that's, that's been where we are on the read-alongs. My reading week this week, it feels like I've read a lot, but I don't think I really have. It just, it just feels like I've got a lot done. And it's been a non-fiction week for me. I mentioned to you last Friday that I was just getting started with um, The Feather Thief. Um, by Johnson and I've really enjoyed it and it got better and better what I had read in the first part that I mentioned to you last time was background on this heist where um, 
a salmon tie tire, a salmon fly tire, had broken into the British Museum of Natural History's um, outpost, I guess you call it, at Tring, where they had these collections of 19th century bird skins locked away for scientific study, and he broke in and stole a bunch of them. But as you get into the second half of the book, everything you think you know about that crime starts to change, and it becomes more complicated, and it takes the the writer on a journey to England, to Norway, and then back across the country in the United States. And it's really fascinating. I really enjoyed it. I mentioned before that it's very similar to The Orchid Thief by Susan Orlean, another one of my favorite writers. And it is. It's a story of obsession. It's a story of man's desire to possess the beauty of nature, even at the destruction of nature. Uh, and so it's a fascinating read. I really enjoyed it. And then, of course, since then, I've been reading Evicted. So it's been a non-fiction week for me. Looking ahead, I'll finish Evicted tonight or tomorrow, and then I'm starting two new books. One is a novel. I'm reading The Wardrobe Mistress by Patrick McGrath, which is my fifth of the six shortlisted titles for the Walter Scott Prize. And then I'm also starting my first read for the Reading Women's Month uh, readathon in June, and that's a collection of essays by Samantha Irby called Meaty, and I'll be starting both of those tonight or tomorrow morning. So it's been a busy week. Um, I hope to get through all four read-alongs in June, all four of my readathon titles in June, and get my apartment all but packed up for my July move uh, on my townhouse in Durham, North Carolina. They've almost finished the framing and the roofing, and then they start on the electrical and the plumbing next week. So they think they're on schedule for me to move in late July. We'll see. But I need to do some packing and some, some shedding of junk in my current apartment before I make that move back to North Carolina. So I think that's all I have to share with you this Friday as far as my reading goes. So I'm going to get back on the trail and head back towards some more uh, towards the Performing Arts Center. We're walking away from the ocean as I'm going this direction. And it is a little steamy out here. Okay, over here, just around the bend, is the Broward County Performing Arts Center. Uh, there are several recital halls and concert halls where local symphonies play. Um, when I was coaching speech and debate, we had a big showcase there every spring for the students who were going on to nationals as a way of fundraising for them to help offset the cost of their trip. It's a beautiful facility, but I haven't really been in there too often. It really is a lovely center. There are a couple of restaurants. There is kind of like a ballroom that you can use as any number of things. We once considered having our debate team banquet in there and it would have been gorgeous and the food would have been wonderful, but some of our parents objected to the cost. So we ended up doing it on campus and it was shabby as you could expect. So I got outvoted on that one. 
but it would have been wonderful down here with a view of the river. There's lots of terraces. There's the ballroom, the Porter Ballroom. And the Wayne Huizinga Pavilion. If you've never heard of Wayne Huizinga before, you haven't spent any time in South Florida. His name is on nearly every other building. I can edit this down to under 12 minutes. We'll see. Got a lot of dead time on this video. Uh, people are lined up. My guess is graduation. Yep. Somebody's graduation ceremony is in the big theater today. Congratulations to them. All the families are happy about it. Send them off to college and get them out of the house. Okay, there you have it. My walk down from my apartment, across the river and down to the Performing Arts Center. And I'll turn this off here and make my way back. I hope you all have a lovely week. I've enjoyed seeing a little bit of downtown with you. Maybe next time I'll take you across to the Los Olas district, the shopping district, closer to my apartment. It's pretty spectacular too. Okay, have a good weekend everybody. I'll talk to you soon, bye.